What's up, guys? It's Simon over at Run Pure Sports here to do a underdog best ball mania draft with you today. I written a couple articles already. You can find them over on Run Pure Sports in the NFL section. Today we're going to do a draft to kind of go along with those articles, show you what I've been uh, drafting, strategies, ADP, all that kind of stuff. And if you like what you see over on the site, make sure you subscribe to our premium service. If you're a new member, you can use the promo code RPSHEATER25 and get 25% off your first payment on a monthly subscription. And uh, for now, just give us a like and a subscribe on the YouTube video, and we're going to dive into this draft right now. All right, so you can see in the lobby, you can find the Best Ball Mania draft in there. We're going to click on that. We're going to enter. It's 25 bucks to enter. We do 12 team leagues right now. We have nine more to, uh, to enter this. Um, basically I don't go into these drafts with any particular strategy. It's just kind of, uh, taking the first good guy that comes to me in the first, in the first round, the guy that I like the most in the first round and just kind of going from there. Um, I've been doing a lot of wide receiver, wide receiver. If I, if I get the back end of a draft, I like to try to get like Tyreek, Stefan Diggs, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. If I can grab a, a couple of those guys in rounds one and two, that's great. There's, there's one running back, which I mentioned in my article that I'm interested in, in the back of the first round, beginning of the second round, that's Austin Eckler. I think he's a good value right now. He's an explosive offense and it's a good opportunity to grab one of those guys like Dalvin Cook a couple years ago or Christian Kirk a couple years ago that were going in the second round. He's Eckler's got that same vibe this this year where you know I, I'm trying to grab as much as I can in that second round, hoping that he breaks out this year, has a big year, um, ends up with a uh, with a value that would have been more of a top five running back instead of a like top 10 to 12 running back. My favorite spot to uh, draft this season is in the eight to 12 spot. Those are the lineups that I end up uh, being most happy with. And I don't like drafting in the beginning of these drafts because if you're playing against guys who don't really know what they're doing, then a lot of that value gets soaked up before it gets back to your next turn. So I like to be in the middle toward or towards the end of the draft. So that way, if, if uh, people are misjudging the draft and, and, and dropping value down to me, I'm able to, to scoop it up. And these things fill up relatively quick. It's, it's been about two or three minutes. I've been drafting since May and in the beginning it used to take uh, take a lot longer for these to fill, but now it's, it's, it's getting to the point where there's enough buzz around um, the underdog contest and the, and the DraftKings contest. Both, both those sites have a million dollar contest that is drawing people's attention right now. And there's a lot of talk on Twitter about best ball drafts and people sharing their, their screenshots and everything like that. So the hype's hype's getting a little bit up there now. I've drafted a little bit too much at this point. We just finished with, OTAs. We got training camp coming up next uh, in a few weeks. And I've already drafted like 90 entries into this underdog contest. And that's, that's uh, way more that I want to be at right now. So I'm going to do it sparingly until we get to probably August. And then I'll, I'll start picking up the pace a little bit more. Uh, last season, I don't know if, uh, if you would remember or not, but last season on DraftKings, I was doing the same thing. I was doing all my entries into the contest. And then a couple weeks before the season started, DraftKings ended up giving a bunch of free entries away to, uh, to other DraftKings players, just, just so they wouldn't have so much overlay in it. And then there ended up being a flood of people who hadn't been drafting at all entering into the uh entering into the tournament and and i was already out of out of entries so i wasn't able to take advantage of that and a lot of people were able to get some very soft competition in in these in these drafts and uh wasn't wasn't too fair for the rest of us but 
got to make sure that you're saving some of your entries uh, for closer to the season, just in case uh, anything weird happens. One thing that you want to make sure that you're doing too is is customizing your your draft order. Uh, your your um, let's see, let me show you your rankings here. If you go to NFL in this drop down, and then you go to your 2021 best ball season, they also have rookies and sophomores, um, which is a pretty cool draft too. It's a, it's a four person draft, and you can only draft rookies and second year players in that one. So that's, that's pretty fun. It's a lot quicker draft. Uh, like I said, it's only four people. I think it's about 12 rounds and there's a, there's a lot, a lot of different strategy in, in that one. It's pretty fun to do uh, as well, but I'm right now focused on the 2021 best ball season. So if you go to that, you can see that you can edit your rankings like right now let's see do i have anything that i don't like right now yeah derrick henry i'm not a i want to put i want to put kamara probably in front of barkley i like barkley i'm not overly concerned with his injury as as some are that's dropping him down towards the back end of the first round elliot i want him down here i like eckler better than elliot um problem with zeke is there's been a lot of uh um he's, he's just slowed down the last few years and it seems like he's just letting himself go a little bit and he's not uh he's not as concerned about football now that he's had his uh had a big payday which you know i can't really blame him for that but as far as my fantasy team goes, I would rather not uh, not draft him. All right, so we got three more to start. Usually fills up a little quicker than this, so it's uh, taking a little bit longer than normal. So I'm hoping, like I said, to get towards the back end of this draft. That's my, my favorite uh, position to draft from. Um, as you, as you go along, I don't really go into these things with any plan on specific stacks or anything like that. You just got to kind of feel it out and see how the, uh, how the draft comes to you a bit. If you start to notice that you're being set up to draft, you know, like a couple receivers or a couple players from a particular team, and then you decide that, uh, that you want to stack the quarterback with them. And then from there, you try to figure out, like, how good is that quarterback? Is that a good anchor quarterback for me? Do I need to grab another one pretty close to that one? Or do I want to wait until we get past the 10th round to draft my second quarterback? And if you have two weak quarterbacks and you want to consider drafting a third one, I'm either drafting three QBs or three tight ends in each of my drafts I, I tend to do about four or five running backs and i just try to load up on on wide receiver yeah reason why I, I try to load up on wide receiver is you can see that your roster your weekly roster is going to contain the best score from one quarterback three wide receivers one flex play two running backs one tight end and then you got your 10 bench spots so if you have, you know, like wide receiver, which is a pretty volatile position, and you have three spots, potentially four spots to fill every week for that position, I want as many of that position as I can get because I want as many opportunities for one of those wide receivers to go off as possible. Or in this case, three of those wide receivers to go off as possible. All right, here we go. Let's see where we land. Let's see. That's good. And yeah, we got the eight spot. That's good. That sets us up nicely. I like being in the middle. Like I was saying, like uh, that's 
a good spot for value to fall to you. The thing that sucks about it is you have to wait uh, pretty long in between your in between your turns, but I don't mind that so much. It's easier to build stacks if you're at one of the turns, but you know you can get better values if you're if you're towards the middle. And look, this guy is probably going to take McCaffrey. Because McCaffrey's kind of a no-brainer, and so is Dalvin Cook. Gets a little bit shakier with Alvin Kamara. Kamara, you know, the offense is going to look completely different without Drew Brees in there. Um, Latavius Murray tends to get a lot more play when Drew Brees isn't the quarterback, at least uh, historically in the past couple years. So that means Latavius Murray might have a bigger role this season. There goes Derrick Henry. I'm generally fading Derrick Henry this season. He's had a, a few huge touch seasons the last couple of years, so I'm, I'm concerned about his durability a little bit there. And I prefer not to uh, to use an early first round pick on him. All right, so. All right, so I'm going to go with uh, Tyreek here. So the guys that I'm hoping fall to me next are going to be Diggs, Eckler, Hopkins. Those are the guys that uh, that I've I've taken the biggest stands on this year. And there goes Diggs. Before Diggs was going in the mid second round when I first started doing this, and now he's going more frequently in the first round. Um, I was getting a lot of good value on Diggs in the beginning, um, and now, like I said, you know, he's 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 probably about he's probably gone up about like eight positions since I started this. All right, there goes Hopkins. That sucks. Hopefully uh, Eckler will fall to us, but I don't think he's going to. In that case, I'll probably go for Ridley as my number two. I'm not a fan of... Uh, I mean, I'm a fan of these these other running backs, but uh, you know, I don't want to have a, my running back one competing with guys like McCaffrey and, and, and Cook. I'd rather just stack strong receivers. That sucks. Ridley's gone. All right. We got Eckler. That's good. I don't mind. Like I said, like Eckler, I think he could have a top five running back value this, this season. So I, I like getting him there. So let's see. So we got a week seven and a week 12 by week uh, so far with our top guys. I like having those by weeks spread out. Like sometimes you can get into trouble. Week seven is a big by week this, this season. So there's a lot of studs uh, on by that week. So you got to be careful that you're not drafting too many people with the same by week, because otherwise you're going to, you're going to put yourself at a huge disadvantage if, if, your biggest studs are all on the, on the same week. Terry McLaurin, he's the guy that I hope falls to me next. Uh, if not, then CD Lamb. Those are the two guys that I'm I'm uh, taking stands on. I like to get the as many of my my favorite players in in these drafts as possible, like just so I can have a high percentage of overall exposure to them. Because if I'm right about something, then I want to be right and and have it hit hard. I don't want to have 
my picks all spread thin and then that would you know have that be a negative against me that sucks somebody just took uh, cd lamb he's going earlier and earlier too all right good got mclaurin we'll see who comes to me on the back end of this it's kind of hard to project i don't get the eight spot uh too often i like mclaurin this year though because uh obviously if he's got Fitzpatrick throwing to him, we've seen what happens to the alpha receivers when Fitzpatrick throws to them. You know, Deshaun Jackson's had had a huge year. Uh, Mike Evans, uh, Brandon Marshall back in the day. Um, you know, like in Devontae Parker, he 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 brought Devontae Parker rose him from the dust so he's he does a good job with these uh these alpha receivers so right now I am probably let's see I might I'll, I'll draft Mahomes if Mahomes falls to me since I got Tyreek and I, and I don't mind taking Mahomes in the fourth round I don't like getting him earlier than the fourth round I wouldn't want him but if I can get him in the fourth, that's that's pretty good. Especially mid-fourth. There we go. All right, this looks pretty good. We got Mahomes, we got Tyreek, we got McLaurin, and we got Eckler. And that's from an eight spot, so that's a pretty solid lineup right now. Uh, strategy is turning into what I call hero RB. Uh, other people call it um, modified zero RB, which is contradictory in the term itself, but it's also too long to say. So hero RB makes a lot more sense to me. Rhymes with zero RB, and hero RB is pretty self-explanatory. So next round, probably uh, probably going to go for uh, T. Higgins. Let's see if T. Higgins can, uh, can last to us. I think he's going to have a, a breakout year. I love the uh, Bengals passing game this season. And T. Higgins has you know, probably not been getting the love he should just because they got Jamar Chase this year. Uh, but I will take that. I will scoop up that value. Um, if not Higgins, if uh, Gaskin or ETN fall to me, uh, I will not mind taking one of those guys. Let's see what number are we at? They just took Josh Allen at pick 47. <clears throat> so we got eight picks and uh, there's eight guys ahead of T Higgins. So let's see if that ADP lands on us. Lockett. I like uh, I like drafting uh, Lamar Jackson this year too. It feels like Baltimore is way undervalued this season, just because last season might have been a you know quote unquote off year for them. But you're not getting Lamar Jackson in the second round like you were last season. You're getting him in the you know fifth or sixth round this year. So he's, he's definitely got a good value, uh, much better value than last season. Josh Jacobs, a guy we wouldn't even consider. I've got him placed pretty far down my rankings just because I don't want to have any real exposure to him. If he fell to me, like by the time he hit in my, in my rankings, then I would uh, then I would pick him up because he'd be such a good value at that point. 
Gaskin and ETN are both there still. T. Higgins is still there. So let's hope that somebody takes someone not named T. Higgins. There we go. So we got T. Higgins. All right. So our wide receivers are looking really good. I like those uh, bye weeks being spread out like they are. We got a good hero RB in Austin Eckler. And we got Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek stack. So this is looking like a good, uh, a good draft so far. With Patrick Mahomes too, you don't have to really worry about taking your second uh, quarterback until the double digit round somewhere. So um, we could swing for some upside with, uh, with Trey Lance, which I'm doing a lot this season. So we, going to want to keep an eye on these San Francisco receivers just so we can uh, we can build a little bit of a stack there there's some good guys that you can stack with Patrick Mahomes pretty late in the draft too like uh, Jarek McKinnon um, I think he's going a little bit overlooked he's he's on uh, the Chiefs now um, and Edwards Hilaire didn't have a great, you know, like a, you know, like breakout season last year. He, he played well, but he just didn't have a, like a huge breakout. All right. So I'm going to grab Brandon Ayuk. All right. Next round, uh, next round, I'm grabbing a, a running back. I'm not going to push it anymore. I should have grabbed uh, Miles Gaskin there, but let's see. We got a good value on uh, Ayuk regardless. You've seen some good value uh, developing here. We got Eckler as a 17th pick. His average is uh, ADP is 12. Um, Mahomes, you know, we got him five after his ADP. That's that's not bad. Um, so nothing, no huge value yet, but uh, can't complain about what we've been drafting so far. I'm going to focus on uh, running back on this next round. Kareem Hunt's still around too. <clears throat> Both those guys are solid uh, running back twos, RP twos. And then we got Mostert too and Harris. I like all those guys. This guy's probably going to take a running back or two on this on this turn here. He's only got one running back and he's got four wide receivers. I'm not sure if he's getting timed out into his picks or, or what his situation is. Okay, no, he picked Russell Wilson. All right, so he is... Let's see, Kareem Hunt. The Browns are going to do a ton of running this year. And it's a 17 weeks, or it's an you know, 17 game season for, for these teams. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh these teams that have these running back tandems give their RB2s a lot more work. Someone just took Adam Troutman at uh I wonder if that's one of those guys that's Spinning the wheel with Pete Overzet. Yeah, Troutman is not a seventh round uh, round pick. He's a guy that I've been targeting though. Like uh, when we get closer to the fourteenth, <clears throat> maybe fifteenth round. All right, so we got a couple good running back options still. All right. So I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with Trey Sermon. Just cause he's a, we got him at a good value there. Nor if, if, if that was around earlier and it was him and, and Mostert, um, Available. Normally, I'd let somebody else take him, and then I would grab. Let's grab Debo too, um, and then I would grab 
uh, Mostert after someone grabbed Sermon, just because I, I don't think it makes a lot of sense that Sermon's ADP is higher than uh, higher than Mostert. But that's a pretty significant value there, so I don't mind taking him and going for the upside, especially when I have uh, like a team that has a ton of upside right now. There goes Debo. Let's see. I got T. Higgins. I might, I might uh, try to grab Tyler Boyd too. Uh, depending on what the uh, the running back situation is when it comes back to me. If I grab Tyler Boyd, then I can grab uh, Joe Burrow as my QB2, and that doesn't conflict with my bye weeks. So a couple more picks until it gets to me. There's a lot of good guys still on the board here, so if Tyler Boyd doesn't make it to me, it's not a big deal. That dude just grabbed T. Y. Hilton. Like this is a, uh, this is what I'm talking about with guys just grabbing random people and and value just falling in your lap. All right, so most are still on the board. I'm gonna grab uh, Tyler Boyd. So we're set up for that Bengals stack. Uh, probably grab him in the 10th if uh, Burrow's still available. I'm not going to reach for any stacks unless it's a really good one. Burrow is 96. Where are we at now? That dude just drafted uh, 90, so Burrow might not even make it to us. So, you know what? I might as well just grab him if it makes it back to us in the 8th. I'm a little conflicted here because if most are still available when it gets back to me. Okay, good. That resolves that. I don't like drafting two running backs from the same team, but if you can get them at, at crazy value like that, like I don't really fault you for it. All right, let's take a look and see how our team is uh, coming along. <clears throat> All right, so we got a week seven and a week six by weeks on our running backs. Our, our receivers are spread out real nice. We can start considering tight ends in, in this range, too. If Dallas Goddard falls to me on my next pick, I might just scoop him, even though I want Burrow. But there's enough other good tight ends right now, so that's not a necessity. I can just grab Burrow. Complete the stack. We're at the point now, too, where uh, Burrow is the next quarterback as far as ADP goes. So makes makes sense to grab him here. He's at 96. Where is uh, – oh, there he goes. All right, no big deal. We'll grab Goddard if he makes it to us. There we go. All right, so we got a good tight end. Drafted. Look at that value on Goddard. That's – 20 spots later. Good value on Tyler Boyd, too. All right. Uh, is LaVisca <clears throat> Chanel still available? No, LaVisca got taken. Let's see how many run wide receivers we have. We have five wide receivers right now. <clears throat> I'd like to... 
grab a couple more before they start thinning out too much. Yeah. You can start thinking about Trey Lance here too. Let's see where we're at. Drake was pick 111. I think I can get away with. I'm not going to take any of those running backs. I don't like the value there. Um, let's see. I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab Mooney here. I think he's an upside, really nice upside uh, <clears throat> receiver. And if. Trey Lance doesn't fall to me, then we can just go with uh, Justin Fields instead. That way we have a stack either way with those guys. <clears throat> Mooney, we got him right around ADP. We got him uh, three value spots ahead of him. We're at six wide receivers now, which is good. Uh, they're all good receivers. I like that. We're not having to reach for scrubs in the in the later rounds, which which I really like. We'll focus our scrub reaching on the running backs. All right, nine picks. We're hoping Trey Lance or Justin Fields falls to us. <clears throat> and if not, uh, we might just might just try to draft Gasecki or something as a second tight end and go for a Dolphins stack. <clears throat> the thing to uh, be conscious of too, when you draft Trey Lance and Justin Fields, you're risking them not being starters at the beginning of the season. So you want to be conscious of your QB ones by week. Patrick Mahomes is week 12. I would, I would be willing to bet that one of those quarterbacks is going to be a starter. Um, if not both by week 12, I think Trey Lance probably has a better shot at it. Which is, uh, you know, makes him my preferred uh, preferred target. Justin Fields' um, coach came out and said they want to use the Patrick Mahomes model on him with uh, with shitty Andy Dalton and just leave Andy Dalton rotting at the quarterback position while uh, Fields is stuck on the bench. Let's grab Trey Lance. There we go. All right, so let's start thinking about running back here. I want to grab uh, Latavius Murray as my next target if he makes it back to me, or Gus Edwards. I'm, I'm happy with Gus Edwards. He's got, he's actually got some really good uh, ADP value right now. He might be a better to start with. Latavius Murray, I think he's going to have a much bigger role than his ADP is hinting at this season, like just because of his past performance when Breeze is out of the lineup. Jamal Williams, another guy that I wouldn't mind uh, falling to me. I, would, I don't know if I'd grab him right now Especially, well, I definitely wouldn't grab him before Edwards and, and Murray, but as far as this particular round, if it was just him on the board, I don't think I would grab him because I'd prefer to grab him at a better, better value. I'm not that high on him. 
All right, so we're going to get Edwards or Murray here. <clears throat> Hopefully you can grab Edwards. There we go. And grab Murray on the next round. So we got three solid um, running backs right now. We got Eckler, Sermon, Edwards. We're solid at quarterback with Mahomes and Trey Lance. Our wide receivers are very solid. We got Tyreek. We got McLaurin, Higgins, Ayuk, um, Tyler Boyd, and, and Darnell. Got broken up a little bit on our Cincy stack, but that's okay since we still have a lot of the firepower in that passing game. Um, and then Dallas Goddard as our tight end. So we're, we're solid all around right now. And there goes Latavius Murray. We can start looking at our second tight end here. Uh, Gerald Everett is a guy that I like, but he is off the board right now. I've been taking a lot of Austin Hooper, like just because he falls so late for whatever reason. He had a kind of a down year, but he was on a new offense last year. Janu and Hunter Henry, I've been kind of drafting them an even amount. I'm not really taking a stand on either of those guys. I mean, any any either one of those guys could have a strong season if you want to go with the Patriots uh, tight end. We also want to be considering considering our stacks here too. Uh, there's no real San Francisco guys that I'm interested in drafting until we get to, you know, the 17th, 18th round. And that's where I'll start looking at guy like uh, Jalen Hurd or something like that. But as far as Kansas City, I am definitely interested in. Uh, where's he at? Did he get drafted? Yeah, Jarek McKinnon. There he is. Definitely interested in Jarek McKinnon. That's another one of my running backs. And this is where I was talking about with um, Jamal Williams. If he falls to me at a value, I'm more interested in him. But who do we have at wide receiver? John Brown, I like. He could be the... Uh, he could be the... We got three tens, week 10, bye weeks in there. For our receivers, I might just grab John Brown, even though Jamal Williams is is a good value. I think uh, John Brown could potentially be the number one receiver for uh, Las Vegas. Uh, the only other real competition he has, based on last year um, performances, is the uh, the tight end Darren Waller, who I'm fading. Um, So John Brown could end up falling into a really good situation this year. If uh, I also like Brian Edwards, taking him just because I think he's another one of those guys that could break out this season. Based on... Um, Nelson Aguilar and Tyrell Williams, I think both both left this offseason. So that left a huge void in, in targets in that offense. And most of that will get soaked up by, uh, by Waller. But you got guys like Brian Edwards and Henry Ruggs and now John Brown that are there. So they got a lot of weapons to throw to. It's just a matter of if Carr can start throwing to them or not. <laughs> this is normally where I'd be looking for Adam Troutman, but as we saw, he went in the seventh round for some reason. Um, so we don't really have that that late round value for, for a tight end right now. And Jamal Williams is still there. So if he makes it to us, then we're gonna grab him. Can't put it off any longer. They, this dude has five running backs already, so it's a good chance that he's not going to pick up a six unless he auto-drafts it. 
which you might be doing. Nope, we'll take them. So what value did we get there? We got him at the 161 pick. His ADP is 133, so that's a good value there. Gus Edwards, we got a really good value there too. Things are lining up for us pretty good with uh, with running backs right now with the uh, strategy that we used with the Hero RB. So if I end up with Edwards, I might just grab Carr. Although I think I prefer to have three tight ends in this build. Edwards is going at pick 169, and we just drafted 164. So I'd have to grab him this next round. He's uh, he's getting scooped up this season. There's some there's some good buzz on him. There he goes. If I had a Colt receiver already, then I'd be looking to draft Carson Wentz just to to build another another little stack there. <clears throat> not really in love with any of these receivers except for uh Josh palmer i like him uh, i think he'll probably make the uh, starting lineup for the chargers this year as a rookie and uh if you can get a piece of uh that starting lineup then that's a good thing it has a little correlation with our eckler play too Sean Jackson, another good receiver that is going super late this year. And he's in a good offense this year, too. I don't, I'm not entirely high on Matthew Stafford, but you put Deshaun Jackson in that offense and, you know, give Stafford another weapon to play with. And then it's, it's a lot of upside for, for uh, Jackson even though he's got a lot of target competition. All right, so let's look at tight end here. Ferkser took a big hit when Julio was signed, but right now he's, uh, he's falling to a pretty good value, so I think I'm going to scoop him as my tight end two, if he makes it to me. All right, so we got our tight end two in Ferkser. <clears throat> we got Ferkser and Dallas Goddard. Uh, we got seven wide receivers already. I want to make McKinnon my fifth running back, and I want to grab him before I lose him. So let's put him on the, uh, on the list. Uh, wide receiver, let's look for some Chiefs wide receivers, if they're still around. We got Demarcus Robinson. Let's put him on the list. Byron Pringle, he always seems to do pretty decent, at least on the, let's see, let's look at him. Yeah, maybe not. I play a lot of showdowns, so maybe he just sticks out there for some reason. Robinson's not great either. Cornell Powell, he's a rookie. I'm, I'm not looking to draft too many rookies right now because I want to draft uh, Palmer, and I don't want to over overload on uh, on rookie receivers. <clears throat> especially when we got guys like uh, Jackson who has plenty of upside for us. I like Hamler too. Draft a lot of Hamler and Slayton. Even though Galladay has joined the team and he's got a lot more tar target competition, I just don't think that they're just going to, you know, forget about Slayton. Darrington Evans is another running back that I like to draft normally just because of my 
my bet on Henry durability not holding up this year, but I am not going to draft him because I'm drafting uh, McKinnon as my fifth running back, and I don't want to go with six running backs on this build. I think we have enough uh, decent value at running back so we can get away with a five running back uh, build with a hero RB strategy. All right, McKinnon as our fifth running back. Gives us another person to stack with uh, Mahomes. Hopefully McKinnon will have a big role in the passing game. But that is yet to be determined. A little too early uh, to put out a jury on Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. He was hurt a lot of last season. People thought he was uh, disappointing. But... I don't really have a take on it. Let's see. For tight end, I want to grab a tight end three. I want it to be. I want it to be Austin Hooper or Mo Ali Cox. <clears throat> I like rolling the dice on Ertz too, just in case he lands on a on a decent team and they kind of revive him, uh, which we've seen happen a lot of times with these tight ends. You think they're old and dusty and then they end up on a team and they end up having a big year. Um, I think that could happen with Ertz. Potentially. And the narrative on Ertz right now is that he's completely washed, which is good for his ADP value. So if you can scoop him up at 18th round or something like that and take a stab on him, I don't, I don't blame you at all. Deshaun Watson's another guy that I like taking stabs on, but since I have Mahomes and uh, uh, Trey Lance already, I, I don't really want to, uh, to, to add a third, a third uh, quarterback on, on this build. But it does give you an idea of, of uh, how long Watson is lasting in these drafts. So we have round 17 right now. So we're going to get two more, two more picks. So since Josh Palmer, I think, is off the board. Yep. Um, I'm going to go with... Deshaun Jackson as my final receiver. And then whoever's, well, scratch that. I'm going to go with Mo Alley Cox before there's no more uh, tight ends to draft. You know, we've seen uh, Carson Wentz's history with, uh, with tight ends. And Mo Ali Cox is an athletic tight end on the Colts with uh, with Wentz, so I he could he could end up leaning on on Ali Cox a lot this season or Jack Doyle, but we're gonna bet here on Mo Ali Cox. Jack Doyle always seems to be uh, be hurt or not playing for whatever reason, so. Maybe this is the year that Mo Ali Cox kind of takes over that role. All right, wide receivers. Deshaun Jackson is still there. Hopefully he'll follow us. If not, KG Hamler, I'm cool with that. Uh, if he's not there, uh, then Nico Collins. You know, I like I like uh, that he's a rookie wide receiver on a ambiguous receiving squad. Brandon Cooks is really him and uh, Kiki Kuti are really the only guys to throw to on that team, uh, apart from Randall Cobb, but he's he's pretty old.
and he hasn't had a really good season in a long time. So, so we'll focus on Deshaun Jackson or KJ Hamler since Nico Collins is out too. <clears throat> Not interested in Cornell Powell as an add-on to our, our uh, chief stack. And I could potentially grab Jalen Hurd here just to give a, a, another guy for our San Fran stack, but I'm just going to go with Deshaun Watson. I'm going to play it safe, quote-unquote. He'll at least give us one or two games, and hopefully those will be spike weeks. So not too bad. Like Cox uh, ends up with the same bye week as Goddard, but we have Ferkser in there anyways, and he's he's got a week 13. I'd prefer to have three separate bye weeks on those tight ends. Our receivers are strong. We got eight and our worst one is Deshaun Jackson. So that's, that's, that's pretty good. And our running backs are anchored by Austin Eckler. We got Trey Sermon to go with our little San Francisco stack there. I don't mind stacking the, the quarterback, a running quarterback with a, a running back. You know, ideally we would have had you know, like a tight end to kind of go in that tandem. Uh, oh, we got Ayuk. Ayuk. So, so we got a decent little San Francisco stack there. Can't, com can't complain about that. So good stuff. That's a good draft. I feel pretty good about that one. And from the eighth position. So you saw what I was talking about earlier with uh, value kind of falling to you uh, when you're, when you're in the middle of a draft like that. It's always funny to see what the uh, projections are at the end of these things. The projections are, they, they seem way off on, on underdog for some reason. All right, 28.99. So that puts us uh, pretty low compared to, <laughs> compared to the other projections, but I feel pretty strong about that team, so. Uh, so I feel feel good about that draft. All right, so pretty solid draft overall. I'm pretty happy with that team. Uh, we'll be doing some more of these in the future, pretty spread out since I don't want to use up all my entries into the contest, like I was saying earlier. We'll do some sophomore and rookie drafts and stuff like that uh, in the meantime, just to, just to get us some more videos to put out there. I'm going to be doing a show with JSU and Holden coming up. So keep an eye on our Twitter account for that at run pure sports. You can follow me at Yeti boom films. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure that you hit the like button. If you, if you liked uh, our video and check us out at runpuresports.com where you can get 25% off your first payment on monthly subscriptions. So make sure to sign up for subscription. Our guys are on fire all the time, winning uh, big tournament players and big tournament winners. They give you their core plays. They give you their playbook, uh, like for every slate. So you got good assets there to, uh, to, to, to lead you in the right direction for winning DFS lineups. So good luck and keep an eye out for the next video. Thanks. And check out the articles, runpuresports.com in the NFL section.